Despite major security outlays and legislative proposals to reduce cybercrime, we, the lawful computer users, are losing the war against cybercrime. Why? Well, for starters, the statistics are against us. If you consider that there are 2 billion computer systems that have an internet connection, and rather optimistically assume that 99% of them are secured against basic threats and types of attacks, this still means that 20 million attacks per month will be successful. This translates into 240 million computers to get infected with malicious software each year. And remember, we're being very optimistic here. The numbers, by and large, are simply against us in this fight. Why don't we take a look at the past to get a better picture of all this? Let's start with prehistory. The Stone Age of computer systems is the 90s. During this era, we had Robert Morris, who became famous largely as the creator of the first widely spreading computer worm. The worm exploited software bugs in Unix services, in SendMail, and among others in RSH and RXX. The worm also attempted to crack weak passwords. Anyway, Morris himself claimed that he created the worm and released it on the net, the internet of those days, to measure its size. Each infected machine responded to the attacker, so Morris was able to determine the number of infected computers. To prevent the same machine from being infected multiple times, the worm used a mechanism that asked whether the computer already had a copy of the worm. If it responded yes, the computer would not be reinfected, which means that a progeny process of the worm would not be launched. This mechanism could have been easily subverted to stop the epidemic. It would have been enough to run, without analyzing the functioning of the virus, a program that responded with yes when asked whether the computer was infected. Or wouldn't it? Realizing that this could stop his attack, Robert Morris decided that one in seven infected computers would be reinfected regardless of their answer. Morris apparently did not imagine what would be the scale of mass spreading of viruses. About 10% of Unix systems attached to the internet, roughly several thousand computers, were infected with the worm. And so the first attempt to gauge the size of the internet in the 90s ended up as the first global denial of service attack. Robert Morris, or someone who claimed to be Morris, then sent out an email which poked fun at common media belief, or should I use the word paranoia, which pictured cyber criminals, and I don't call them hackers for reasons I'll explain later, as people who, as you can see, could turn your computer into a bomb and detonate it remotely, killing you and your family. Robert Morris dutifully alerted his readers of a new type of virus, which was worse than anything yet found on the internet. A virus that distributed itself through power lines of 60 Hz by changing serial port pinouts and reversing the direction in which disks spin. Those among you who are a bit older may remember that computers used serial ports in the past. There are also silly hints on fighting the virus. First, don't attach your computer to a power line. Don't use batteries either. Batteries are rumored to be infected as well. Don't copy any files. Don't read any messages, including the one you're reading now. Don't use serial ports. Don't use modems. Modems are another relic of the past. They were used to connect your device to the internet. Don't use keyboards, screens, or printers. Don't use electricity and heating. You might say that an exaggerated media reaction triggered an exaggerated response from, well, let's call it the computer systems security experts movement. Time has shown, however, that this exaggerated reaction was unfortunately not so absurd after all. <laughs> 